Welcome back, defenders. Jake here. Let's check in on Ukraine's counteroffensive, and Ukraine confirms the liberation of another settlement in the Zaporizhia Oblast. This was accomplished by the brave defenders of the 128th Jaeger Brigade and the 2nd Separate Rifle Battalion. They put out this video confirming that no Russian forces remain in this village. Where on the map is this? Here's the city of Zaporizhia. This is the axis that they uh, made progress on yesterday. And Ukraine's counteroffensive began about 12 days ago. They first took this village. A couple days later, took this village. A couple days later, took this village. This is probably their next target. If they can get to this village here, then all the Russian forces holding the line uh, close to this bridge can't be resupplied. They'll either be captured or forced to retreat, uh, liberating a large section of territory. So it's incremental gains, it's tough fighting, but every day Ukraine shows progress. And for the last two days, the video that everyone's been talking about is this GoPro video of a Russian trench. Horrors of trench warfare, captured in viral Ukrainian special forces footage, one by one. Russian troops are gunned down after the Ukrainian special operators entered a trench in a surprise attack. So here's the video. I'll link it in the pinned comment if you want to watch it for yourself. Ukrainians are beginning to shift tactics. Rather than moving in slow-moving tanks and armored vehicles, they're preferring high-mobility vehicles such as Humvees to get behind these Russian trench positions get inside the trenches, and surprise the Russians. What takes place in this video is these soldiers are caught off guard. They don't know the Ukrainian special forces are behind them. So it turns into kind of a turkey shoot. Check it out if you want to see this detail of war. Russia is taking losses, so reportedly they've been transferring a lot of equipment and troops from the Kherson region to Zaporizhia. Either way, this is a positive. This might take some pressure off the city of Kherson. Russia has been bombing and shelling it frequently. And who knows? Once the water levels recede, uh, following the collapse of the dam, maybe Ukraine can get some bridge equipment and start getting across the river in the Kherson Oblast now that forces are being transferred to Zaporizhia. But it doesn't matter how many soldiers or equipment you have if all your supply depots keep blowing up. So there was a storm shadow strike on an ammunition depot in Rikavi. This happened yesterday. And this must have been Russia's largest ammunition depot in the occupied territories. This is 110 kilometers from the front lines, and this is the before and after satellite images. So here's the before. This was some kind of agricultural rail depot that the Russians converted into an ammunition and fuel warehouse directly on the rail line. And here's the after. There's no way that a Storm Shadow missile can do this much damage. So Russia was storing a lot of ammunition and fuel in these buildings, which led to a pretty devastating explosion. Here's some video on the ground put out by a local showing that all of these buildings are completely gone. And we already knew that Rikavi was an important logistics center for the Russian army, but the results of the destruction leave no doubt that this was their primary logistics center, containing thousands of tons of ammunition and fuel. An event of this magnitude will have more impact on the battlefield than the destruction of armored vehicles in a battalion. And this isn't a singular event. Since the introduction of these Storm Shadow missiles, Russia's logistical supply lines throughout the occupied territories continue to go up in smoke. This is going to lead to ammunition and fuel shortages for all of Russia's forces fighting in Zaporizhia. And Russia doesn't like being on the defensive. They think this makes them look weak. So Russia might be making a push in the east. 
Both Russian and Ukrainian sources agree that Moscow's forces are on the move in the Donbass region, a possible counteroffensive to the counteroffensive. Where is this occurring? And this is occurring close to Kremina. There's been no map changes, they've made no progress. But pieces are in play. And this dotted line here is technically the boundary for the Donetsk Oblast. Russia views this as their sovereign territory that Ukraine is occupying. And what they want to do is get back to the city of Liman. They controlled the city of Liman for about six months and then lost it in the Kharkiv counteroffensive. This was pretty embarrassing for the Russian forces, and they'd like to get back to Liman. Is it going to happen? I argue no. I think Russia is incompetent and not capable of going on the offensive ever again. And this is the level of tactics, the level of warfare that the Russians are now waging. Ancient Russian T-54 tank turned into a rolling bomb explodes in massive shockwave. In a new development, Russia appears to be using antique T-54 tanks as vehicle-borne improvised explosive devices. Of course there's a video. I'll link it in the pinned comments. But what they're doing is they packed six tons of explosives in this 60-year-old tank and then jerry-rigged it to drive straight at a Ukrainian position. The Ukrainians saw it coming, they hit it with an RPG, it exploded well before reaching the tree line, so hopefully the Ukrainian defenders are fine, but this is objectively insane. Russia has long-range precision weapons such as cruise missiles. If they wanted to use them on the Ukrainian military, it would probably lead to devastating effects. But Russia reserves all of their best weapons for blowing up gas stations and fast food restaurants in Kyiv. This is what they're forcing their soldiers on the front lines to do. Pack explosives into tanks and then kamikaze them into enemy positions. I'm speechless, guys. The Russian military is literally using rocks to fight this war. Chicken wire and rocks to provide extra armor plating for their tanks. And Russian propaganda continues to astonish me. This is a two-star general about to give a report that the Kyiv regime is planning to attack Russian soldiers with infected mosquitoes. I'm going to read this for you. The Kyiv regime's planned flooding of the Kherson region's territory map may complicate the situation, including the situation with airborne viral infections. After the fall of the water level, the formation of mosquito-borne diseases, especially West Nile virus, is possible. The high technical level of U.S. preparedness for the use of the carriers is evidenced by the patent for an unmanned aerial vehicle designed to spread airborne infected mosquitoes, which we discussed earlier. According to the description, the drone should deliver a container to a given area and release. When bitten, the mosquitoes are capable of infecting the military with a dangerous infection, such as malaria. The patent description emphasizes that an infected serviceman is not capable of performing frontline combat missions. And it is noted, quote, such a method of infecting the enemy military would have a significant effect. No, I'm sorry. As a veteran myself, the United States military would never deploy this in the occupied territories of Ukraine. One, this can infect Ukrainian soldiers but the overwhelming majority of people in this territory are innocent Ukrainian civilians. Ukrainian civilians that Ukraine is trying to liberate. So no, even if a patent exists for a concept, there's no way the United States military is deploying malaria-infected mosquitoes by drones to Russian trenches. That is objectively insane. So the internet's having a field day with this, 
This right here apparently is a Ukrainian combat mosquito. Here's a picture of a classified NATO mosquito. Let's keep going. We've got mosquitoes against Moscow Edos. Moscow Edos. <laughs> uh, here's a mosquito that's been given uh, a tiny javelin for devastating effect. Glory to the mosquitoes. So why the heck is Russia a two-star general talking about viral infections being delivered from Ukrainian drones. And it's because the Russian military is incompetent and all of their soldiers are suffering from bad nutrition, bad personal hygiene, and they're not getting clean drinking water. Russian army hit by cholera outbreak after the dam flooded. So cholera is a bacterial infection that if you do not get cured, if you do not have access to clean drinking water to rehydrate, you will die within a day, a healthy person, with the worst diarrhea of their life. So what's happening is Russian soldiers are sick, and they're dying, and their leadership is telling them, it's Ukraine, it's the United States, they're uh, hitting you with malaria infest infested mosquitoes. And it's not because we're incompetent and we can't even provide you with clean drinking water on the front lines. The Romans knew 2,000 years ago that disease can destroy an army without even meeting the enemy. To hear stories of Russian soldiers dying of cholera in the year 2023, this is just embarrassing. Kremlin officials turned to heavy drinking to cope with war stress. Senior Russian government members are turning up to meetings drunk as they down vodka, cognac, and wine throughout the day. The Russians were already pretty heavy drinkers, but given how poorly this war is going, their dreams of as and aspirations of restoring the Russian Empire, yeah, I think they're going to be hitting the bottle pretty hard. So what the heck is Russian state TV doing? This is their job. Get out the propaganda to inspire the people and instill fear in your enemy. Let's check in on Solvyov, uh, his most recent attempt to win this war. Говорит Москва. Я Владимир Соловьев. Обращаюсь к тебе. Скажи мне, украинский солдат, тебе дорога немецкая техника? Убивавшие твоего деда. Тебе дороги голландские подарки. Ты думаешь о том, что придет F-16? Вот так это звучит. Solvyov is a paid actor. The highest paid actor on Kremlin State TV. I don't think he actually went to the front lines. I think this is entirely fake, but he wanted to film this video broadcasting his voice over the radio waves, assuming that he could convince Ukrainians to surrender to the Russians. Surrendering was their best option. And this is never going to happen. Putin's shock troops are castrating Ukrainian prisoners of war with pocket knives in torture camps as two survivors reveal experiences worse than hell. So about 2,000 Ukrainian prisoners of war have already been exchanged and returned back to Ukraine. All of them have been starved. Um, almost all of them have been brutally beaten. A, a very high percentage have been tortured. And there are Ukrainian POWs who have been returned, coming forward to tell their story about how they've been castrated. Here's a clip from Times Radio. I'm going to share this video on the community tab of my YouTube channel. I'll link it down below. It is gut-wrenching, but these Ukrainian prisoners of war were told by these Russian soldiers they're being castrated to stop Ukrainian kids from being born. This is the textbook definition of a genocide. So I'm sorry, Solvyov. I don't think any Ukrainians are ever going to be willing to surrender to the Russians when this is how you treat prisoners of war. I'm speechless, guys. And for people out there still supporting the Russians, they're probably just going to say, why do Ukrainian soldiers keep castrating themselves? 
That is how evil and stupid and malicious these people are. Russia is going to lose this war, and all of these Russian soldiers will be held accountable for their crimes. But Solvyov was honest for a brief moment on Kremlin State TV. Solvyov believes that voting for Russian sovereignty after the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991 was a crime. Anybody who voted in favor, and it was a majority of people in Russia, anyone who voted in favor of the collapse of the Soviet Union committed a crime. And Moscow and the Kremlin today is rectifying that crime by restoring the territorial sovereignty of the Soviet Empire, the Russian Empire. This is what Solvyov admits to on Kremlin State TV. Yes, we have Russia Day on June 12th. As a fact itself, Russia Day is great. But every idiot who sat in that hall and voted for sovereignty, I have a question for you morons. From whom the heck did you want sovereignty? From whom? Walk up to everyone who's still alive and ask, Do you like what you've done, you bastard? All of you who brought about the collapse of a great country? Do you like what you've done? There should be a rush a day, no doubt, but also a legal assessment of the activities of the bastards who led to the demise of the great empire. After all, what is happening now is a continuation of those wars. So this is the Kremlin giving away the game, saying that the collapse of the Soviet Union was illegal, never should have happened, these 14 new independent republics are fake countries that don't exist, and the 150 million people living in them are actually Russian. They belong to the Kremlin, they are the people, their resources, their land, all of that belongs to the oligarchs and the ruling party of the Kremlin. And here it is. This is Gazprom's headquarters in St. Petersburg. They are now flying a massive Russian Empire flag, Soviet flag, and the modern Russian flag. All these flags are the same size, and they're flying at the same height, signaling to the world that this is about empire. Russia is ready to wage decades of war and they're willing to kill millions of people to restore the boundaries of the Soviet Empire. They've already got 20% of Ukraine, they've got part of Moldova, they've got part of Georgia, they're going to go into Kazakhstan, they're going to go into Latvia, Lithuania, Estonia, and probably when they're done with that, they'll go for Eastern Europe. Finland and Poland are not safe. They know it. They know what is coming if Ukraine does not win this war. So to fight all these wars that will kill millions of people, Russia needs more cannon fodder, they need more bodies. There are highly disturbing videos appearing online of Russian secret police rounding up migrant workers. So these are both documented and undocumented workers, mostly from the Central Asian republics, being mass arrested so they can be gang pressed into the Russian military. Uh, so here is a group of young men. These, they look like teenagers and, and men in their early 20s. And what they were doing was playing football on a football pitch reserved for Russians only. This is their great crime. Playing football on a field in their free time, because these guys, I'm sure, work very hard. And they're all being mass arrested to be gang pressed into the Russian military to be sent to Ukraine to die. I'll link these videos and clips down below. This is truly heartbreaking, but the people of Central Asia have to see this and they have to know this. If Russia tries to entice you with a good paying job, it's a trick. Don't go to Russia. You will be arrested. You will be gang pressed and used uh, as cannon fodder in their imperial wars. I'm just astonished that this is... This is real, and this is happening. Budinov responds to reports he's dead. A squad of immortal commanders is being created. Uh, so Major General Budinov is the intelligence chief for the Ukrainian military, and he hasn't been seen in a video in a couple weeks. 
anytime this happens, Russian propaganda sly and say that obviously this person is dead. I really like Budinov, and somebody made this chart explaining the vast array of emotions that Budinov is capable of expressing. The same was true a couple of weeks ago when the Russians were saying that General Zaluzny was dead just because he hadn't been seen in a, a video in a couple of weeks. General Zaluzny is fine, and a video put out yesterday, he was seen wearing a Baby Yoda patch. And for anyone who watches the show The Mandalorian, this isn't actually a Baby Yoda. The character's name is Grogu, but the sentiment is the same, that the real Yoda would wear a General Zaluzny patch on his chest. Final couple feel-good clips I've got for you. The first one, I just want to take a moment to highlight the incredible work that so many humanitarian organizations have been doing for the civilians of Ukraine. I don't share enough of these videos, so today I want to shout out to Nate Mook. I've been following him on Twitter for a while now. He does incredible work, both saving and protecting the animals of Ukraine. Uh, he works with disabled Ukrainian veterans, and today's video, I think he's partnering with uh, GEM. This is the Global Empowerment Movement. And I just want to show in its entirety uh, the video he put out yesterday. Once again, the incredible work he's been doing nonstop in Ukraine. Hey guys, this is Nate. I am in the town of Ochetune right now in the Donetsk region, just a few kilometers from the front line. And I'm here with the Global Empowerment Mission team, GEM, who is distributing food kits and hygiene kits to the community here. There are about 900 residents in this town and also uh, this region, there are nearby towns. Some of them are still occupied by Russians and are inaccessible. Uh, but the GEM team is here, as you can see, they've got the big truck here. Uh, we came in with these armored vehicles because there's still quite a bit of in this area, as you can hear behind me. So they have about 100 people that will come in, collect the humanitarian assistance, and then they'll do this in waves so they don't gather too many people for too long. Um, it's uh, a really difficult situation here, obviously. No electricity, no water in these towns, in these areas. And so the GEM team, with support of the Howard G. Buffett Foundation, is doing really incredible work. So here, uh, checking it out. Um, just wanted to give you a sense of what's going on, and uh, we'll keep you updated. Thank you. Bye. If you want to check out and follow Nate's, I'll link his Twitter page down below. Once again, he's been doing incredible things for the people of Ukraine. Final clip I have for you is a Ukrainian soldier rescuing a puppy. Another life saved. That's all for this update video. Glory to Ukraine, glory to the heroes. If you found this video informative, give me a thumbs up. Best way to support the channel. Comments and questions, let me know down below. I love hearing from you guys. Till the next video, keep defending the truth, keep defending democracy.